In this video, we're gonna talk about how you as truck drivers, trucking company owners, or even owner operators can actually make money in this business, how you can increase your revenue, and how you can decrease, limit, or control your cost in the best way possible. And I think this is an important video for you guys to watch to get some ideas of things maybe you aren't currently implementing that you can take a look at as you're trying to grow your trucking business, uh, you know, asset-based business in general. For the first uh, for the first part, I just want to mention that pretty much in 2010s, all of the 2010s we had, uh, so between 2010 and 20, 2020, we had an average trucking company profit margin stuck between 2.1% and 4%. That was the kind of max that you're looking at on average for trucking companies in North America. By 2018, what happened was these figures actually grown to about 6%. And as the economy actually began to recover from 2020's disruptions, as we know what they were about, the profit margin actually in transport businesses went even higher. And so in the first two quarters of 2021, the pre-tax profit margin rose even above that 7%. So for the broader transport and logistics industry, this is what we had. And many owner operators and small fleets, uh, you know, they may remain on the low end of the profit margin scale, but there are ways you can actually figure what you can do to shift that number upwards for yourself and your trucking company. Okay. Now, Simplest answer is to move the numbers on either side of the profit equation. In other words, you're going to try to reduce costs and you're trying, trying to grow your revenue, right? So you can scale according to plans that way as well. So first off, um, on the cost side of the equation, you're going to want to manage your driver's performance. So driving speeds, for example, have a measurable impact on fuel efficiency. So to get the most savings on that end, you have to try to train your drivers to maintain the optimal speed for that specific vehicle. And speed obviously isn't the only driver performance variable that plays into fuel efficiency. But in addition to this, you can also look at reducing idling, okay, by providing things like APUs, or auxiliary power units. And this is to provide the driver comfort during breaks without actually spending fuel to idle the engine. In addition to this, you can consider providing routing tools to help drivers avoid uh, traffic issues. So you're looking at a route optimizer that will optimize route planning guides. And all of this can actually save on fuel costs in the long run and you know, whether you like it or not, fuel is one of our biggest expenses in trucking uh, in general. In addition to this, you can look at investing in fuel cards, okay? There's many fuel program uh, offers out there. I've seen some as high as 42, 45 cents per gallon. But, you know, you should shop around. You should see which one would be the best option for you. So look for factors like annual fees, uh, charges for using scales, and also any kind of rewards program these cards may have as well. Now, once uh, one card that may have a f higher fuel discount, for example, may include things like hidden fees. And obviously, that's not maybe ad advantageous for you as a trucking company. So you want to take a look at which one has a fine balance. Okay, you should do your research to figure out which one would be a good option for you. Um, if you guys want some recommendations on some, you guys can always reach out to me and I can give you that information um, for you to go then do your own research, sit down with them, ask them how they can help you grow your business that way, okay, and help you control your costs in the right way as well. You can also enroll in certain weight station and uh, or weigh station and toll bypass programs as well. So, you know, when your trucks have to stop at every way station, they're losing time, they're losing fuel. So way station bypass systems prevent expenditures by allowing trucks to skip way stations, continuing to their destinations at highway speeds. Pre-passes, you know, that's a leading way station bypass system in North America. And it offers a phone-based application as well, 
as well as a transponder box as well. And in addition to this, tow booths also require drivers to stop and go, stop and go, slow down, and often even times wait in long lines. So this is burning fuel, this is burning time. So just like this, you can actually pay for services that allow drivers to bypass these delays, right? So PrePass does have integrations, for example, for a toll payment system through uh, in, into their services. And there are also local toll bypass systems like the Easy Pass, for example, which operates through much of the East Coast and the Midwest as well. And these services do allow to pay tolls in one bundled invoice of pretty much freeing up drivers speeds right to, to remain at the uh, at, at a constant speed rather than stop and go stop and go stop and go as an example okay in addition to this you should shop around to find vendor costs that may be lower than what you're currently paying for okay you may have to buy things like straps uh, windshield fluid maybe a new gps device or different varying supplies in the middle of a haul okay so the most convenient place to make these services is a truck stop but of course that's going to come with a premium because you're paying for the convenience right so items like this are available for less from things like a hardware store or an online seller as well so over the year the savings add up so maybe shifting over from just you know depending on convenience to maybe buying things a little bit in bulk to try to get yourself uh you know, saving on the long run of things for like a year, right? In addition to this, bundling insurance options as well or policies, right? So trucking company owners need several types of insurance, commercial liability, uh, workers' compensation, cargo coverage, trailer inter interchange agreement as well, right? So this is just a couple of them, just naming a few of them. So insurance agents offer discounts for bundling these such products and savings can be significant if you're bundling these products with a provider okay consider at least it doesn't hurt you to at least consider when you're when you're doing your renewals okay or getting insurance in the in the beginning as well in addition to this uh remaining co compliant okay so just a second with me okay so remaining compliant essentially is you making sure that you're doing your pre-trip inspections, that you're doing your preventative maintenance, that you're doing all of that stuff to try to stay as compliant with the FMCSA as possible. The USDOT charges a median fine of $11,125 for violations of the FMCSA regulations, right? So you can avoid these by just rem remaining compliant, okay? This can mean replacing a taillight, or ensuring you stay under weight limits even. Simple things that take a couple seconds of your time, minutes of your time to do, okay? Some tips I can give you guys for growing um, your revenue as well. You should 100% know your operating cost. Your cost per mile to service whatever you're servicing, whatever customers you're servicing. And in order to control your profit margin, you need an accurate picture of your expenses, okay? One of the most important uh, key performance indicator for this task is the cost per mile, okay, the CPM. So this tells you how much you pay to haul a load a single mile. So when you know this figure, you can then adjust your rates to reach your target profit margin, okay? In addition to this, schedule more short hauls. Short hauls typically pay more than long ones, okay? So they also place less wear and tear on your vehicles, and if you have a choice between one long or three short hauls, take three short hauls, okay? You'll bring in more revenue per mile driven, okay? In addition to this, nurturing relationships with repeat customers. If you're missing profit goals, you may have to raise your rates, okay? So repeat customers will be more likely to accept higher rates when you have a good, mutually beneficial relationship for both sides involved, okay? In addition to this, you can work directly with shippers rather than going through brokers as well, even as a smaller company. Brokers, sure, they're great. I'm a broker myself, so there's a great way to maintain steady business there, but we as brokers have to make a cut too, anywhere from 10 to 20%, and there's a lot of us that you know, are 40, 50%. You know, not myself, but there's a lot out there 
that are 40, 50%, okay? So if you can find customers on your own as a trucking company, you can eliminate this payment, right? And have a chance to negotiate a contract rate, gaining a steady client um, of, of, uh, of business, a, a stream of business, okay? When the time is right, obviously, you should look at investing also in new equipment and expand your range of services, okay? There's only one way to offer more services. It's to invest in equipment. So you can't haul a reefer load or cars with only a drive and trailer. So leaving you locked out of a whole area of business, right? So invest your profits back into the business with flatbed trailers, step decks, some kind of new revenue stream that's relevant to your geographical area. So please don't take this advice that if you're out of, you know, the middle of nowhere, Canada, northern latitudes of Canada, and you think your best option is to get a reefer or to get a cargo van and you're going to do really well for yourself. No, you have to do your market research to see what does your geography and what does your location or domicile city or state or region of a state or province really offer okay what do they manufacture you know what could you or what do they buy what does your city what does your town your village your area buy so you know where you need to send your uh, vehicles okay in addition to this expand your fleet okay one of the best ways to scale your business is obviously invest in more tractors and hire more drivers that's quite a big investment but the more trucks you have on the road, the more jobs, more orders, more loads you can take, more shipments you can do, and the more revenue you'll bring in, okay? But things like, you know, um, factoring could be a way to grow your business because you're getting cash flow in advance, right? It's a good business growing investment to consider. If you guys want some examples of, of some, you guys can reach out to me and I can give you um, a way forward as to how you can go and talk to them and, and get the best for your money from that respective. Okay. In addition to this, reducing your deadhead miles. Okay. That's pretty much driving empty, right? You're burning fuel, you're wearing down equipment, right? You're disrupting your revenue. So the key to minimizing deadhead is to find the connections, right? So these are small shipments that can take you closer to your next pickup location while also getting paid, okay? So you might offer lower rates for these sorts of orders or shipments to secure them. But after all, any rate at the end of the day is better than zero, but take this with a grain of salt, okay? There is no reason for you to be taking 30 cent a mile loads or 50 cent a mile loads or 80 cent a mile loads. You still should consider your operating costs before you you start giving out huge discounts to any shipper out there or brokerage out there, okay? In addition to this, diversify your customer base, okay? Trucking companies are subject to supply and demand, right, to, to what happens. So it helps relying on a single client or industry, okay? So in other words, if you're relying only on one industry or one shipper and that's it that's a very dangerous game to play okay if you only haul electronics your company probably suffered obviously from the 2021 shortage of computer chips for example right so diversifying your shippers this helps to protect your company from a boom boom and bust cycle that we go through um, in the economy right in this north american economy both for america and canada in addition to this, you, you can look at mixing and matching seasonal work again if your geographical area allows you to do this. Okay, let's say you have a customer who ships soil and mulch. Okay, so probably, you know, they're going to become extremely active around February and maybe slow down by October. If you don't have orders or you don't have loads lined up for the winter, you could be in a lot of problems to make revenue, so, uh, to make money. So if you have a contract with maybe a road salt shipper, as an example, you can then have work all year round. You see what I mean? Like seasonality, but for your specific region. So planning seasonally can help disrupt uh, even a workload that, that is going to cause you problems with your revenue, right? So you have to look at this as 
not putting your eggs in one basket rather than spreading them out, okay? And try your best, if at all possible, to minimize the driver turnover, okay? So hiring is definitely expensive, okay? It takes time and money to train new drivers, right? Not to mention that experienced staff who know your routes and customers tend to be more profitable, okay? So keep your team happy to reduce turnover and keep your business on the road the, the, the best that you possibly can as a trucking company, okay? If you guys like this video, give it a like, a comment, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my channel that I'm trying to grow. I'm tr like I said in the post, I'm trying to grow it a lot further than it already is right now, all right? So thank you very much for watching. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, or any kind of debates, hit me down in the comments, please. We can get a conversation going. All right. Thank you.